Okay, uh, that's how I finish uh, this clown keynote. Uh, I would really like if you could write uh, one question. Becky, do you have the paper for I them to, to write? Uh, I, I would like at least one question. I, I prefer if you write questions, okay? Uh, then comments and notes or anything. But if you have a question or something that I could not talk about. And while uh, people are struggling with their pens and papers, if you want to ask any question for the cameras, remember that uh, <laughs> your image might be used in my research. So if you don't want your image or your voice or what you write or say to be used on my research, just say, I don't and I won't. Would you like to ask something or just live in the paper forever? Because this thing you drew here, I'm going to get back to down to us. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Fresh, fresh. Can I ask you something about that? Yes, please. Um, how do you think if we were this close to be found, whereas this has this has this clown, he must be a character. It's just it doesn't come from a character. This is a, a, a very, very interesting question because when I think about the clown and when I'm doing, uh, it depends, it really depends what do we think a character is. I think before thinking about what a clown is, what a character is. And uh, is it uh, something that you only can find in, in theater texts or literature or you have to uh, relate to some kind of entity far away from you. Uh, so this kind of outside character, something that you have to, a mask you have to put on. Uh, so I think a clown is not a character in this sense. But I think he is a performatic he is, or she is, when I say he, in reality I'm talking about a, 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 a non-gender kind of entity. Uh, but there is something related to the, um, the deepest um, part of yourself. It's this misfitness I'm talking about. It's very private, and each one of us, we are misfit in a different way. Because each one of us has, uh, has a different assign, a different, we are different human beings. And uh, this makes us uh, and our misfitness very peculiar, very exclusive. And in this sense, the clown is very ex exclusive too. So it's not a character that you can find in books, but it's a uh, character Within, or we have to deal with within something. It's it's tricky because I, it's performance. It's not uh, the best moments of my clown was not uh, were not on stage. But my clown was there, and I could feel it. But it, why it was not it didn't count because it was not on stage. I was not performing, it was not public, you know? And the clown has this characteristic, is it must be public, it must, it must be shared, it must be with others. Otherwise, you know, clowning with yourself sounds a bit of uh, some kind of masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> Names for the clown, and the 
that those names are very clearly different than their names and those behaviors clearly different than their behaviors. So in that sense, in a way, their clown is a character, I guess, in exactly. the same way that that person is a character, I guess. If that, is, that, is that kind of a, a, a potential way to think of it? Well, uh, I, when I start my research, I came with the idea of an essential clown. Um, uh, essence is a very tricky word, and an essential clown is the trickiest. Uh, the, and the, the idea is, uh, I used Fernando Pessoa, a, a Portuguese poet, and he wrote a book called uh, The Deep Self and the Other Selves. And I was suggesting that the clown was one of the other selves. Mm -hmm. and, the, and once you get, re get control of this self, you can really clown around. My clown has a name. And it's Gorgonio, and it's it's really a, a kind of character that I, I take care of it because it's some something that uh, I respect and when it comes when it's here it really gives me some kind of uh, energy or some kind of uh, feedback from the audience that I don't have with Marcel or the other. Star Trek or whatsoever. So does that mean, like, it couldn't necessarily be written for you? But, I mean, obviously things can be written for you, but if you're looking for your clown, that's not, that's got to, it's, is that, do you think that's something that has to come directly from you, then, or the individual person? I, I've never played uh, in, in a theater role with my clown, but I think Gorgonio could be a character in a theater, too. You know, it's different. But uh, usually, my clown is very selfish and personal. He wants to hold and, and, and get uh, these elements uh, he produces, uh, he creates. So it's him, there's some kind of belonging uh, uh, when I talk about my clown. Mm -hmm. And my clown, he produces this kind of material. I, I have to thank Leo. He, already, but Leo uh, is my wife and director, and she helped me directing this first part of it, and she was, she was very good in saying, okay, this is your clown, right? Right? And I have to ask myself, is my clown doing that? Or, or it's me, Marcelo, you know? So there's, uh, uh, it's, it's a kind of entity. It could be some, some people like uh, Sue Morrison's in Canada, uh, Sue Morrison's work is about the shamanic clown. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of entity that comes down and <laughs> your clown is there, you know? But I'm not, I think that hard work is rehearsing, is uh, doing, is uh, developing this kind of skills, the clown skills that you get to your clown and not just praying for the clown work. Well, if you want to know a little bit more about clown truth, is in the other room. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you're rehearsing a show and you're consciously making decisions with the director about what works and what doesn't work, how is that related or not related to being conscious of decisions which reflect on research, is that different or is it the same? Well, Paul, I, I have to, to confess that uh, the research and uh, the whole time, the 32 months that I've spent here, changed my clown. And uh, all the philosophy and all the, the workshops I've done as a participant and the whole uh, literature, th this whole thing really uh, had a very big uh, influence in, in the way my clown uh, performs. So it really interferes in a way or another. Uh, but one thing that I realize 
is that uh, it can interfere in a good way. This idea of misfitness, for instance, when we were, I have to thank Leo uh, Sykes because she helped me directing the first part, the, the clowns, and uh, sh th there's always a dialogue when we're doing it. And uh, this, uh, I talk about a trigger uh, that uh, has to be pulled in order to detonate the creativity. And it's, it's some kind of path to misfitness, to this misfit state that when I'm there, when I feel that the state's there, there are a lot of things that uh, open up. You know, it's like, uh, it's easier to break barriers, to uh, break with the rules and uh, overcome the principles and everything when you are in this uh, special state. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question. Can, I, can, I, can we ask Leo, though, if he agrees with you that your clown has changed? And if it's possible, can she say if so? <laughs> um, yes, I'm not sure how much it's the research and how Maybe much. Maybe just that he falls back a lot. The <laughs> um, I, I haven't found that the involvement with research has been that um, necessarily good for creative work, to be really honest, I should say that as a non-academic. <laughs> um, and like today, for me, there was just the researcher there. I don't think the clown changed very much. And I, I think maybe this attempt to put the two together in, on the same stage was a very risky um, thing. And it was interesting to take the risk. Yeah, yesterday the clown was like... Yeah, the, clown, the clown came much more present. Yeah, and, and maybe because and of the audience too, you know. Yeah, there's a scarier audience today. Yeah, much more. <laughs> you know. um, no, and, and, uh, and the feedback too, you know, because yeah. yesterday the, the feedback was a bit different. Uh, I felt uh, a bit of uh, emptiness, uh, empty room uh, coming from the audience, and the clown has to deal with that too. And this is where it comes or it doesn't or sometimes it's there but it's trying to uh, get the most of it so uh, and uh, Leo has been my director for uh, 17 years now so it's she knows that th the whole process I've been passing through with my clown uh, it's very interesting I'm looking forward to get back to uh, just the clown but the research is very important too you know because I'm Can I can just say one thing though, just to finish answering Paul, it's just that it's to do with what functions, like what functions the research is not necessarily the same thing that functions in a creative context. And I think for me that's been a real issue. What what are our actual priorities here? And so you know, he's got his own. And I have to find a balance too and between the research and the practice, and I think this is a big struggle here. It's to find the the right balance between what uh, how philosophy can uh, inform and, and help the practice to uh, be a better and more effective or work in a better way. Yeah, I think this is exactly what I'm trying to imply, that there's, a, there's, there's an understanding from the audience's perspective of what the fit is, and the clown then engages with that being incongruous, so that's what, that's what makes it performative. So the first thing one needs to do is set up what, you know, set up what that was. In your, in your video, for example, you, you were, there was a video of, of uh, two, two um, young students who were arguing over who had a mop. It could have been, you know, it could have been a scarf until such time as you mentioned it was a mop, a, a mop head. I had no idea that it was a mop head. Mm -hmm. So I was watching something else, and then when you said it was a mop head, I was like, okay, so they're, 
you know, they're now arguing over something that might not, might not be that important. Um, until the audience perceives that as having a fit, we can't then produce a misfit. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent point. I mean, in order to get the misfitness or the, the fitting in, uh, uh, in order to get the misfit, we have to know what fitting in means. Mm -hmm. We have to know what, uh, that's why I was uh, talking about when I talked about objects. We have a referential totality. Mm -hmm. We know that a uh, uh, chair is working properly when you sit down and the chair is for sitting down. Mm -hmm. When a chair uh, breaks or like in Grox Act mm -hmm. or, or something, there's, uh, so first he sits down. First mm -hmm. he shows the audience that the chair is working in the proper way, in the way we know. Mm -hmm. And then when it breaks, okay, we take a look, we saw, we see the referential uh, totality and say, okay, he's changing that mm -hmm. in order to, so. The so Chaplin's shoe works, as in we know that that's a shoe, is because it is exactly functionally, because it's functionally a shoe. Exactly. But then when, when he, um, when Chaplin then used, used the roles to entertain, I mean, it was, it was actually performative to entertain someone. So yeah. he was trying to make somebody more happy yeah. and he decided to use something and the incongruous nature of that yes. meant that it was funny or more, or more performative for, for an outside audience as yeah, well as for, the the girls for that, that relationship. Watching, exactly. So the, the first there is a context and then there's a rupture of mm -hmm. this concept, uh, the context or, or the, the there are many ways, but this is certainly a way. Mm -hmm. You first show the, and usually in clown shows, the audience comes expecting incongruence mm -hmm. or some kind of uh, uh, challenge to the normal or to the uh, reality or the things that we are mm -hmm. used to. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. I was wondering about, have you performed for misfit audience? Of drunken people, indeed. indeed. Like that. Uh, it happens a lot in, uh, if you're performing in, in the streets uh, uh, because you can't control. I mean, they come and go. And uh, I perform for children a lot, mm. you know. And children are fantastically misfit because they don't have the patterns or the, the, the society uh, some kids, yeah. They don't have the, the, the rules established yet. They can break the rules easily. So if they don't like the show, they just throw a thing or they say some. Or, and we perform in, in, in prisons, we perform in, in uh, uh, asylums and for mad people. Uh, so it, there, there are a lot of misfit audience too. And there's and a is, different is that, way of- Is that a misfit audience or is that a misfit relationship with the audience? No, because there's, there's two things. One thing is we're playing our uh, score here, our clown score, which could be even based on misfitness. But if I'm performing to a, a, an audience that comes to a show, to watch a clown show, is one thing. The, the, the audience is not misfit. They are fitting in perfectly there. But if you're going to a prison where they didn't choose your show, or they, they, they don't like clowns, or they, uh, I mean, there's something there that's not fitting, you know, and uh, that's what I understood. Yeah, I just uh, want to know how it differs, like your performance, how it changes. Yes. In this. Is it something you feel inside, or is it something that adapts? It's, uh, sometimes it's, uh, there's a kind of reversal of roles. They become more interesting than us. You know, because we are very interested in what we're doing, we're trying to, but then they are very, so we can, uh, they become more interesting than us, you know, so there's a kind of reverse of roles sometimes. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, we've had, they have been crazy situations like performing for rubbish collectors, and we had a whole set made of rubbish, and they're trying to nick our set during the show, so we're trying to steal our set back off them who are trying to steal our set, and so yeah. it can get fairly insane. <laughs> I think this kind of links into some of the things that have been asked, but you gave a really lovely definition of the misfit object, and I can't remember it was that paragraph with the underlining. Um, is that same definition the same for the misfit body? 
And if so, who decides what belongs where and when and how in context? And what of society and culture and identity? Well, unfortunately, you didn't come yesterday because yesterday I invite the audience to play the misfit body here. Today I felt a bit uh, weird to invite you guys to come and dance a little Is bit it with me. the same definition as the one that you gave for the misfit object? No, not the same definition. I'm trying to relate the misfit body with the misfit logic. I'm saying that the misfit logic of the clown is manifested in the body. So what's the misfit logic? Is, uh, and uh, in Bounier and Grupo Lume in Brazil, they use this a lot. Is uh, the, the manifestation of reactions in your own body, but it's reactions that you wouldn't allow uh, to have in your daily movements, for instance. You allow the body to do weird things or, or play in a different way or react to things. And I'm talking about uh, extra daily virtuotic body. Is in order to get to this extreme or to this expert that Dreyfus call, like uh, Chaplin or Keaton or many others, uh, you have to train a lot. You have to train your body to be a misfit body. That's what I'm suggesting, you know. It's, uh, and it's a very hard training because it's the training of uh, thinking like a clown. It's doing things in a clown way. And, and this is a very different way than just miming or just uh, the training for the misfit body. This is what I'm trying to get to. Is a very different training from uh, actor's training or dancer, or it's a different uh, approach. Or oh, there's some, so something that I didn't experience before, or something that I didn't allow myself to uh, find out, you know? So this is uh, a real, uh, an exciting challenge, is to go to, to but try to bring this world to, uh, to my clown practice, and then seeing if it could work for others too. Can we just extend that, that thought, the last thought a little mm -hmm. bit further? Um, because you say you fought clowns for a num great number of years, these not, not clown, I've been a teacher, You've been, okay, but teacher, not a clown okay. teacher. All right. A clown you, teacher I've been for, for a few years, but not 30 okay, something. Okay, I'll take a few years. Okay. I've been a clown teacher <laughs> for a few years. Okay. But this, this workshop, you went in with a very specific set of aims. Yes. And very restrictive yes. attempts. And so could you maybe just talk a bit about how effective you think they were in terms of precisely working with students, and I, I'm assuming these students have not engaged in any clown activity or workshops before. Yeah, that's, that's uh, extremely interesting, Tony, because some of the students there, they didn't, uh, and I'm calling them, them uh, trainees because they were not there really to learn, but uh, uh, to train something. Uh, they didn't come because of the clown aspect. They came because of the misfit aspect. They identified themselves with misfitness. So they came to, to check this out. What, what's misfitness? What's, what's to be a misfit? How can this help my work? And not necessarily a clown work. So uh, I don't think a clown necessarily has to make people laugh. So I, this is my point of view. This is my approach. So when I see them in a misfit state or doing something that it, it could be extremely interesting in terms of uh, using it or for clown material or could become a clown material, I say, okay, there's, there's something here uh, that uh, it could be extremely useful for you as a actor or as a, a person to experience. Did, did you feel that? Did you feel that there was some kind of special state there, that you change your uh, state of being. You're not just being the normal one that you were before you came to the room. So when they acknowledge that and they came with their own perspective what uh, misfitness is, then the research got some kind of uh, consistency and an uh, interesting body. So uh, I have to say that it was very useful to test specific principles. And not just the misfit object, the misfit relationship and the misfit body.
Oh, is it the big one? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so my question is sort of about your experience of that particular set of workshops in relationship to what you've done before, which is not use these principles in, the, in that explicit a way, and, and whether how that's changed things or have you seen any? It it changed and inspired me in, uh, to to take another direction. Actually, it's not just. Uh, because I've, I've been doing many workshops here in, in Europe and in, in the UK, and most of them comes from Philippe Goulier's line. So it's always uh, about laughter, it's always about being stupid, it's, uh, the, it's always about the game, it's always about uh, some rules, some specific uh, uh, Lecoq and post-Lecoqian kind of uh, tradition. And then when I experience that, I say, okay, there's something different here because it's not necessarily about laughter. It's not necessarily about uh, games. It's not necessarily about um, uh, rules. Uh, but it's, it has to do with some, some specific state of being. So it's, uh, I was trying to get to this point. And so that makes the whole thing very different. In the beginning, I had to teach, an, uh, uh, in the beginning of the workshop, I had to teach uh, an exercise. So through this exercise, we could get to the misfitness. So I was going, just repeating some kind of pattern that I always did. I just came as a clown teacher and say, okay, let's play, let's do that. And then I said, oh, but that's not research. This, I'm just repeating my, my own teacher uh, way of being. So let's see how can I make this a real research. Let's try to risk together. Let's go beyond the, the, the limits here. And uh, this is when the research came. 